Hello everyone! Today I'm going to go over the new supervisor configurator. So first here I have my supervisor. Just with the other configurators you can either pull it up directly with configure or if you don't have a configuration you can hit start up and it'll pull it up for you. So now let's begin with configure system. First it's going to ask how many reactors you have. In this case I only have one. Then it's going to ask how many turbines and boilers this reactor unit has. In this case I have one turbine, one boiler and it has a connection to a dynamic tank, which is used for emergency coolant. So since I selected at least one tank connection, this prompt about facility dynamic tanks will be shown. With one reactor, this doesn't really matter, but when you have more, it can allow for using one tank for more than one reactor, and we'll get to that later in the video. Next, if you didn't select facility dynamic tanks, it's going to then proceed to the network configuration. So here I have all the default channels. If you're using different channels, you change them here. These should be common between all your devices. Anything with the same name should be the same channel. So next, it's going to give you the option to set all the different timeouts. Again, you want to leave these as default, like with other configurations, unless you're having a lot of lag and you want to try increasing these so devices don't disconnect. But note, if you're having a lot of lag, it still might not help because the data just might be very slow to update anyway. Next is the trusted range. Same with other configurations. You can use this to limit how far away devices can be before they start getting connections rejected. So the supervisor will then only accept connections from this many blocks away. And finally, for the network, you have the facility authentication key. You can use this to enable message authentication between devices, which adds a layer of security on multiplayer servers so that other people can't control your system but just make sure if you add this, it needs to be on all devices, it needs to be the same key. So in this case, I don't have a key, so we're just gonna backspace that. So here I have the default append on startup for my log files. I don't want it to overwrite log files on each startup, but if you wanna conserve space for a reason, you can change it to replace, but just note you'll lose log files each time you start the app. Here you can specify the log file path. If you want to, you can put this on some disk. If you have a disconnected, um, you can click around here, double click, select all that kind of thing. You can paste in here. And then finally is the enable debug messages. This helps identify issues if you start having problems, but this creates much larger log files. So it's generally better to just keep this off. It reduces strain on the system. Here I have my summary. My one reactor for unit one, one boiler, one turbine, has a tank connection. Facility tank mode is zero since it's in unit mode, and I said no to that. Tank definitions, no facility tanks, since I said no to the tank mode. And then all my default channels, timeouts, trusted range, everything's here, it looks good. Hit apply. So now since the configurator got pulled up when I ran startup without a config, exit should bring us back to the app. And here we go, all configured. Now I'm going to demonstrate the process of importing a legacy config file. So again, I can pull this up either with startup if I have no configuration or the configure command. Let's start with import legacy config. This is going to go straight to an overview, unlike the RTU, because this is a lot simpler. It's going to show the number of reactors, then the cooling configuration and everything else, just like the summary before saving that we did when we just started with a fresh configuration. So if this all looks good, just do apply, we'll delete that old config. It's going to exit, start the app up with startup. So since I set this up as a unit tank, it says U1 there. Then you want to make sure when you set this up on your RTU, let's pull up that configurator and see peripheral connections. I have a dynamic tank for unit one, not for the facility. If I went over here and did a facility config, you use facility dynamic tanks connect unit one to a facility tank. So your mode one, with one tank, these are all gonna look the same since there's, well, only one unit, so it can't get too complicated. It's about page, I'll tell you that and also give you configuration examples. Okay, so we just wanna speed through that. Start this back up. So over here, it shows dynamic tank F1 because this is a facility dynamic tank. And see that my RTU is connected because I have my other peripherals, but the dynamic tank won't show up and that's because it's still configured as a unit dynamic tank. So this is facility tank F1. So that means it's facility tank number one. In peripheral connections, I'm gonna edit my dynamic valve to be for the facility. And this is the number one dynamic tank for the facility. Confirm this, apply, exit, and start up. And come back over here. Now see that it's online, it's dynamic tank F1. 
So to demonstrate more dynamic tanks, I've jumped over to another world where I have two reactors. Here you can see both connected to tanks. I've chosen facility dynamic tanks. In this case, I have one facility tank, one unit tank. The layout looks like this, which is how they're connected. I'm just gonna start up, get the coordinator back running. See over here, we have a tank F1 and a U2. So this is unit two's tank, and this is facility tank one. You can see the unit tanks will hook up on top and facility tanks will hook up on the side, which lets the pipes go across when you have more systems. So now I'm gonna demonstrate some of the other modes. So if they're both facility tanks, now it can start getting more complicated. So now you can have a single tank for two units. In the different modes, we'll change this around. Again, some look the same because there's only two tanks now. Let's say just for demonstration, I'm gonna increase this to four reactors, connect all of them. Now here I have the different modes. So this is tank one goes to all of them. Mode two, three, four, etc. You can see that it changes the connections. This will let you manage and distribute if you have between one and four tanks and you want to do them specifically to more than one tank. There's still a mode for all of them one to one. However, you can also mix and match. So say two of my tanks do have their own, but the other two share. You can now see unit one and unit four are connected to facility tank one. Units two and three are connected to tank U2 and U3. So on an RTU, you would configure um, the dynamic tank that connects to these two as a facility tank number one, and these two as a unit tank and a unit tank for their respective reactors two and three. So now I've jumped to another world that has a larger screen. I'm gonna go in here with configure my four reactors. So they're all connected to tanks. Do tank mode. Let's do a mix and match on mode one. I'm going to apply this. Let's just look at the views. So it's gonna show that all four of these have tank connections and unit two's on a unit tank and the rest are on facility tanks. Start that up and look over at the coordinator. I don't actually have these tanks, so they're gonna be offline. So I can see facility tank one up here goes to unit one and it goes down on the side to units three and four. And over here I have the unit two tank, which only connects to reactor unit two. You can look at other layouts. Now I can look at another mode, such as mode seven here. Apply this, start it up, take a head over here. So now I can see that there's three tanks, facility tank one, unit tank two, and facility tank two. This is not facility tank three, since there's only two facility tanks. So tank one only connects to unit one per the mode. Unit two tank is naturally going to connect to unit two. And then the facility tank number two per the mode is going to connect to units three and four. Okay, that's all for the supervisor configurator. If you need more details on the dynamic tank layouts, you can look at the wiki. If you have general questions or a need for support or want to hang out with the community, you can join our Discord, which I have a link in the description. And if you have any other questions, you can also post those on the GitHub discussions. Thanks for watching.